Are you biomeds being tasked out to do IT's job for them? So am I. But if we're going to do it, we're going to do it like biomeds. We don't just throw out components when they break, we fix them. So coming up next, I'm going to take a look inside the Cerner CE and I'm going to show you its dirty little secrets and how to fix it. Coming up next, I'm Better Biomed. This is a Cerner CE box. It's a data node which collects information from various devices, medical devices, and it transmits it over to Cerner, which is your digital medical record. It's basically an all-in-one panel mount computer. These are very common in industrial environments. In medical, you'll find them usually mounted around things like anesthesia machines. You can see this one here has got a cracked screen, and normally that would be an end all for it. From the quotes that I've been given, they cost well over a thousand dollars, sometimes over two thousand dollars if you buy them straight from Cerner. But I've come up with some methods for fixing these things. So let's take a look on the inside and let's see what it's got. If you flip the Cerner box over, on the back you'll notice that there's two screws down in the corners. You're going to need a number two Phillips screwdriver to take those out. Once you get both screws out, you're going to grab the case with your thumb and you're going to squeeze it down towards the bottom and you'll see it slip. And as it slips, you can lift it up. Now basically what you have here is thermal compound that interfaces with this heat sink. So what you're doing is you're breaking the seal. So it might take a little bit of pressure the first time. Here you can see the inside of the Cerner CE box. It's actually a very simple computer. This is the motherboard with your processor under the heatsink. This is your DC input. Over here is your USB ports. Over here we have a solid state drive. It's only eight gigabytes. And this right here is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. That's pretty much it. They're very simple. So some of the common problems that you'll see with these devices will be right here with the power port. This guy will often be yanked and probably broke free from the motherboard. You'll get corrupted software over here on the solid state drive. Very fixable. And some of the other problems that you'll get are cracked screens. You can see it right there. Although this one has a cracked screen, it doesn't affect its performance. So it's actually a pretty good product. So that's basically the inside of these devices. Not very much going on. Why is it that they cost well over a thousand dollars? This computer in almost this exact configuration with just a couple fewer USB ports is only about five hundred dollars. Cerner charges us well over a thousand, sometimes over two thousand from some of the estimates I've heard. One of the problems I described is corrupted software. Now I highly recommend if you're going to be working on these guys right here to find a good one and make a copy of the software. Now how can you guys do that? What I have here is a solid state hard drive enclosure bought for twenty dollars off Amazon. You take two screws out of the end cap. It's got a USB 3.0 to USB-C connector and here you can see we have an mSATA adapter. So you can read mSATA on your computer. There's one fastener that secures it over here in the corner. So you take that fastener out, it springboards up like this. Just pull it out. Then I take that mSATA drive, I pop it over here into my adapter, and then I wrap clear plastic tape around it to hold it down. So once I find a good unit and I copy the software and I make an image, I just save that. It's only eight gigabytes. Heck, most thumb drives are larger than that nowadays. I keep a, a good image file of that. I'll leave a link down in the description below for the software that I use to make images of drives. See, the important part about using raw data to make an image of a medical device 
is a lot of manufacturers will leave dead spaces in the drive. If you guys didn't know, usually when a drive fills up, it fills up from the inner tracks or from the very beginning of its memory segment. And then as it fills data, it works from the lowest numbers or the inside out if it's a disk. When you use a raw duplicator program, it copies bit for bit, byte for byte. If it's blank, it copies it over as a blank. If it's got data, it copies it over as data. It doesn't care what it is. It's just raw streams of ones and zeros and you create an identical copy of the software. So then you can either use that software and populate a corrupted Cerner device, or if you guys want to experiment, you could potentially buy one of these devices and experiment by popping software over on one of these devices that doesn't have software from another vendor. That's up to you. I don't suggest ever doing that if a patient is going to be connected, but to be honest, this guy, it really doesn't have very much role in treating a patient. It's more so just recording the data. So I'm going to go ahead and take this drive, pop it back into the unit. It goes in at an angle. You press it down. Then the fastener goes in. Hold the drive down until you get the fastener tight. And there you have it. Your drive is reinstalled. Now the cover will go back on the device and you press it up until your seam is universal all the way around like that. Put your screws back in and you're ready to rock and roll. But we're not done on the inside of this guy yet. If you want to change out the screen on this guy, you're going to have Celastic on these connectors right here on the edge. And right here at the top, there's a little piece of tape. To get this screen off, if I want to change it out, the first thing I'm going to disconnect right up here, this is your touch encoder. You peel the tape back, just like this, with a flat blade screwdriver. Be very careful with the surrounding components. And then right here, you have a cable retainer. I'm going to press it up, like so on both sides, and the cable will pop out nice and neat. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off the Wi-Fi connectors right here. And then you can see the Wi-Fi cables string all around the perimeter. So you're gonna pop these off and pull them all the way out to the edges and just leave them dangling. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to pull off the elastic that's over here. I've already got these connectors cleaned off. They all had it on there. Gently feed it up. Tie it up from both sides. Just a little bit. There we go. These pins are very delicate. Be very careful. This is actually your video cable. So be very delicate. You can see that the pins are very tiny. The other thing that you have to worry about if you're going to take this apart is this guy right here. Just grab onto it with a set of needle nose, give it a twist, and that retention ring will come right off. Then this whole entire bottom strap right here, it will fall off, and you can get to the lower screws for your PCB. One's right here, and one of them was right there. There's two other screws up here at the top, and one in the middle, and your whole PCB will pop off. Pretty simple. From that moment, you just take the screen from your donor device, pop it on there, reconnect all the cables, and you're good to go. One of the things I want to make mention is over here, this is your incoming DC power connector. It's got a very big conductor that goes down to the motherboard, and it has a tendency to crack. It's very fixable. You just got to resolder it, and I would use a donor board to get another DC power input. Well, that's it guys. It's a standard computer. It's got an Intel processor, but it's a very low end processor. Simple solid state drive, regular cables. It's not that difficult. Just mind you, the components are small. So take your time. Don't drink too much coffee when you attempt these repairs. Be very gentle. Use a small, thin screwdriver when you're making your disconnects. Next, we're gonna go over making an image of this drive right here. The program that you're going to need to make a copy, a raw image of your drive, is going to be found here at hddguru.com and it's called the HDD Raw Copy Tool. 
go ahead and activate it, run it, and you're going to select your source. You can see down here it says please select source. Your source is going to be the MSATA Mini. Click continue. Now it's asking for the target. I want to save it to a file. And I'm going to call the file Cerner CE image. I'm going to save that right on my desktop. So now that I've got the file selected, click start. And as you can see, it's copying the image bit for bit from the source. Once it's done, this will close out and you have your image saved on the desktop. When you want to burn an image, it's going to be the inverse. You're going to select the file, which is going to be your Cerner CE image that was saved to the desktop and your destination is going to be MSATA and you're going to save it to the MSATA. Once it's finished, you can take that MSATA drive, pop it out, go put it in your CE, screw it down, put your CE back together and you are good to go. As a suggestion, if you guys want to get some spare parts from a donor module, you can do it a less expensive way by buying the exact same product not branded by Cerner here you can see we have the AFL W07BT, which is a 7 inch HD fanless PC. But the difference is, is this unit has a serial port and it's got a different amount of USB ports. It's not the exact same one, but it is extremely close. What you can do, if you need to, you can take this donor unit and you can harvest the touch screen, you can harvest the case if the case is cracked, you have the power port, or if you want to experiment, you can take your image of the software from another CE and you can pop it onto this one, it should think that it's another Cerner CE. I don't suggest using this on patients, but that's up to you. At $535 for a bare bones kit, that's a pretty affordable solution compared to the thousand some dollars that they're going to charge you from Cerner. So that's all I have for you guys about the Cerner CE. It's an expensive little unit. We use it for transferring data to the digital medical record. And Cerner, I believe, is taking advantage of hospitals by charging an extreme amount. Even the bare bones unit is $535. The configured unit is $625. It's still $1,000 less than what Cerner is charging. I don't get it, guys. That's medical markup for you. I hope you like this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you do. Please like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. We are trying to grow this channel and it has been immensely successful so far. I'm gonna get you guys better content. We're gonna save you money. And please stay tuned. I'm gonna have many more excellent videos for you guys over the coming days. And I do have some big news. We'll see how this goes. The channel is in a transition period. I'm trying to do better for you guys. I love the support. I love you guys. Thanks, Biomeds. Have a good day.